Welcome to this episode of Bird and Bird's Competitive Edge, the podcast, in which we dissect competition law issues to help you understand how they may affect your business. I am Amy Dunleavy, a trainee in our competition team in our London office, and today I'll be speaking with Rory Coots, trainee in our data protection team, also from our London office. The topic of today's podcast is the UK's Green Claims Code. We'll be looking at the six guiding principles published by the Competition and Markets Authority for all environmental claims made by businesses, and we'll discuss how this fits in with the CMA's other work, online platform moderation, and the challenges we see for businesses in complying with the code. So Amy, can you begin by telling us about the code? So the CMA published its Green Claims Code and accompanying guidance on the 20th of September 2021. The code is aimed at helping businesses ensure they comply with consumer protection law when making sustainability claims when selling or promoting goods and services both online and offline. The code has gained a lot of traction as consumers demand more transparency on the environmental impacts of their purchases and businesses are responding to this more and more. The key date to have at the forefront of business minds is January 2022. From then, the CMA will use its powers of enforcement of consumer protection law regarding environmental claims. It is important to ensure environmental claims are checked before them and follow the six guiding principles we will discuss later. So who does the code apply to then? The CMA emphasises that supplying products and services to consumers may involve commercial practices by several traders. All traders within the supply chain need to ensure the law is complied with by them and the traders they deal with. This includes online marketplaces that allow sellers to market and sell products via their platforms. And then who can enforce the code? So enforcement is possible through the CMA, the trading standard services, the ASA and even consumers themselves. Okay, and you mentioned the six principles that environmental claims need to comply with. Can you start by explaining what they are and take us through them? The first principle is that environmental claims need to be truthful and accurate which essentially means that businesses should not mislead consumers by giving an inaccurate impression. For example, claiming a pair of jeans is organic when only 35% of the material is from organic cotton is misleading because generally a consumer will think that if a product is labelled as organic, the entirety of the product meets that description. Ideally, the claim should specifically state that the jeans are manufactured from 35% organic cotton. The second principle says that environmental claims need to be clear and unambiguous. So businesses will need to phrase green claims in a straightforward manner, which can be easily understood by consumers. Vague or general statements are more likely to be misleading and businesses need to be particularly careful when making claims on future environmental goals. They need to have clear and verifiable strategies to deliver them. The third principle is that environmental claims should not omit or hide important information. So for example, if a business is claiming a product is recyclable, it needs to refer to the whole product. If one aspect of the product can have a negative environmental impact on the environment, or practically speaking, one element is not recyclable, then this would result in a misleading overall impression. The fourth principle says that environmental claims which compare goods or services need to do so in a fair and meaningful way. So this means, practically speaking, that if you want to compare your new product to others already on the market, The comparison needs to make clear what the new product is being compared to, and it needs to be compared with a wide range of products within that market. I guess in many ways, this makes us think of principle three, which is do not omit or hide information. The fifth principle is that environmental claims need to consider the full life cycle of a product or service, which personally, I think is the most challenging principle for businesses. Any businesses making a claim that a product is eco-friendly needs to ensure that the product has an overall positive environmental impact, or otherwise it needs to specify what part of the life cycle is positive. And a life cycle can include the carbon emissions generated during production, transportation, which could be done by an external company, use by the consumer and disposal. Additionally, if a business highlights only positive parts of the life cycle, they need to be aware that this could be disguising the negative parts as we discussed at principle three, which could also mislead consumers. And the final principle, principle six, is that environmental claims need to be substantiated. And the easiest way to do this is for businesses to retain robust and up-to-date evidence which supports the sustainability claims that they are making. Thank you, Amy. We're now going to pick up some discussion points, starting with how the code fits into the CMA's other work, its effect on moderation online, 
and some of the issues we think businesses will face when complying with the code. So the first discussion point is how does the code fit into the CMA's other work? The CMA has a series of strategic objectives, and one of those is supporting the transition to a low-carbon economy. And this is, of course, an increasing priority for the government as well. So I think from January 2022, we can expect environmental claims when the code comes into force. Yeah, and the code also fits into other consumer law enforcement powers um, for, by the CMA, which are currently under consultation, and we're awaiting the results from that. One proposal under consideration would empower the CMA to enforce consumer protection law directly, rather than through the civil courts, which would significantly raise the stakes of non-compliance. Another proposal goes even further and assigns broad sanctions in line with existing and proposed competition law enforcement powers held by the CMA. To put this into perspective, businesses who infringe competition rules currently can be fined up to 10% of worldwide annual turnover. So thirdly, the CMA has also invited responses to its environmental sustainability and the competition and consumer law consultation. It calls for responses from businesses and the document covers areas that directly relate to the Green Claims Code and the role of the CMA as a competition and consumer protection regulator. So interestingly, in that consultation, the CMA itself has acknowledged that there are tensions between competition law enforcement and plans for sustainability. For example, exchanging competitively sensitive information before or during sustainability initiatives could result in anti-competitive agreements. Interestingly, the call for input also highlights that the current consumer protection law framework is silent on the climate crisis, net zero and sustainability goals. And so two interesting questions which the CMA invites inputs on are introducing standardised definitions, for example, biodegradable, compostable, carbon neutral, into consumer protection law for key environmental terms to assist with the comparability of products. This could aid businesses make fair and meaningful comparisons in line with principle four of the Green Claims Code. Secondly, the CMA also invites input on introducing a specific obligation to disclose material environmental information. This links to principle three of the Green Claims Code, specifically ensuring claims don't omit or hide information. The CMA suggests this could also help businesses who struggle to obtain environmental impact information from others in the supply chain. As such, business-to-business protections are required. The second discussion point we wanted to bring up is whether the CMA is emerging as having a platform moderation role. So content moderation is clearly a hot topic at the moment. You have different jurisdictions taking slightly different approaches to online content, covering goods and or services depending on where you're talking about. The Green Claims Code highlights an odd distinction between the UK and the EU's approach in this area. In the EU, the European Commission's proposed Digital Services Act will require platforms to protect consumers when they buy goods online. So companies like eBay or Amazon will will be caught by requirements aimed at protecting users from illegal goods. In contrast, the UK government's equivalent draft online safety bill doesn't cover goods in its scope as it's claimed that these are already dealt with by existing UK legislation. So, you have an emerging EU online moderation regime which covers goods online, but a UK version that does not. However, the Green Claims Code opens up an interesting nuance to this, and will introduce a specific provision which effectively requires moderation against misleading environmental claims. The CMA will be overseeing a regime which holds online marketplaces responsible for reviewing or verifying environmental claims on their sites, but those same marketplaces won't have the equivalent obligations when it comes to monitoring for illegal goods. And a roundup point on this area is that this poses all sorts of questions about platform liability, content moderation, and is certainly an interesting divergence between the EU and UK's approach. Our third and final discussion point is we wanted to pick up on some of the issues we see that businesses will have when they comply with the code. So we've been through the six principles and there are several contradictions or ambiguities which we think will cause headaches for businesses. One is how do you provide full information on small devices or screens? And this, we think, will pose a UX and design headache for consumer-focused brands and platforms. Really, this conundrum applies regardless of whether you're showing information on a physical product or on an app or another sort of device. We also think that there will be difficulties with some of the examples and how they work in practice. Claiming jeans are recycled cotton if they contain 35% cotton is clearly misleading but would 80% be acceptable? Or would clarifying the claim be acceptable? The calls for input standardised definitions would certainly assist this. 
a last area here is whether labels or accreditations are a solution. And really, we think they're only part of the answer and will require formal assessment of goods and services that make sustainability claims. There are two areas that the code pick up on this, which we think are worth highlighting. Firstly, the code explains that formal assessment against lawful and objective criteria are only less likely to be misleading and don't give an indication that there'll be a solution in and of itself. So businesses may need to audit goods or services that they sell, which make environmental claims. Equally, the code also mentions that businesses should carry out a careful assessment of the suitability of such schemes before joining. They say The code says that self-assessed and self-declared marks or symbols are more likely to raise concerns. To take an example, companies may rely on labels such as fair trade, but they'll have to carefully consider the reputation of these labels before they use them. So to conclude, we're going to summarise two key points we believe businesses should be alert to. Firstly, the CMA has said that the sectors being prioritised for review could include textiles and fashion, travel and sport, and fast-moving consumer goods, such as food and beverages, beauty products and cleaning products. Secondly, the CMA will start reviewing environmental claims in January 2022, so it's good to start preparing now by identifying the claims you're already making, as well as those in your supply chain for which you could also be held liable. Finally, thank you for listening. We also have a Green Claims Code article and another podcast on sustainability and its impact on UK competition policy, which we will link in the description. If you have any questions or comments, we would love to hear from you. You can contact myself via email at amy.donlevy at twobirds.com. Of course, if you'd like to stay up to date on competition and EU law developments in Europe and beyond, you could sign up to receive our monthly Competitive Edge newsletter. You can find a link from our homepage at twobirds.com slash competition.